On SABC News, let's take a look at your market news now. Asian shares jumped to their highest in a decade today after Wall Street scaled all-time highs, while the dollar remained at around two-week lows on worries that U.S. President Donald Trump's tax plan could stall. Japan's Nikkei closed at its highest in 21 years, with gains mainly led by defensive shares, though exporters benefited from solid global growth. Japan's second biggest steelmaker, Kobe Steel, sank by 18%. Its shock revelation that it fabricated data on aluminium and copper products. The Nikkei rose by 0.3%, but Hong Kong stocks fell, pressured by a sharp reversal in property shares. The Hang Seng Index fell by 0.4%. Mainland China stocks firmed, helped by a jump in consumer staples such as big liquor producers, while resources shares curbed gains. The Shanghai Composite Index added 0.2%. Now on Wall Street yesterday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has a record high held by a surge in Walmart shares. Walmart jumped by 4.4% to a two-year high after forecasting that its U.S. online sales would rise by about 40% in the next fiscal year. It also unveiled a $20 billion share buyback. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose by 0.3%. The S&P 500 gained 0.2% and the Nasdaq Composite Index added 0.1%. Now for more on our market news, we cross over to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Nompumelelo Siziba is standing by. Good afternoon, Nompumelelo. Over to you. Thanks very much, Nzinga. Well, while global markets have generally been trading in the black, uh, we have seen that a couple of the European markets have been on the back foot. The All Share Index is in positive territory as we speak, um, but markets really going to be looking this afternoon at those U.S. Uh, Fed minutes, U.S. Fed f uh, minutes that are coming out later um, to get a sense of how hawkish or otherwise they may be. If uh, the tone continues to be hawkish, uh, that's likely to. To be US dollar positive and emerging market currency negative but we have to wait and see what comes out of that. Currently, we do see that the RAND has made some significant gains uh, against the U.S. dollar, and this is on the back of uh, some confusion and uncertainty about Donald Trump's ability to push through his tax plans. But everything is up in the air. We have to wait and see what happens. Let's take a look at the indicators. I'm joined by Michael Chohan. He's a portfolio manager at Vestat. Thanks for joining us, sir, as always. Lumpur, great to be here, especially with markets at record highs. <laughs> Indeed, and I'm sure you're smiling all the way to the bank for it. Now, just uh, tell us, your uh, Wall Street stocks continue to register these highs. Um, it just seems to be happening each and every day. Um, and that's despite reservations about Donald Trump's ability to push through the tax plans. But aren't there any concerns about a possible correction on the markets? Yeah, look, I think corrections are, are normal. Um, if the stock market was very stable and just went up slowly, everyone would just invest only in the stock market because it would be easy and be no, no issues there. Um, so, yes, there probably will be a correction at some point. Uh, how big it is, how long it lasts, when it's going to happen, uh, no one can ever tell you that. Um, but if you have a look at the underlying values of uh, in terms of profits of the companies driving Wall Street and driving the JSC, those profits are there and the valuations are ba mostly justified. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, record highs also. They're normal for markets. It does bring me nicely to the second question, which is about the earnings season, which is going to kick off in the U.S., uh, with a number of large banks expected to release their financial results. Is there optimism about their performance? We know that the U.S. economy is doing well, generally speaking, and presumably this will further fuel more dollar strength. Yeah, so it's not only the banks that are reporting, it's basically earnings season in general, and it's most companies reporting their full year numbers now over the next month or so in the US, I and mean, then they've got a couple of thousand companies to report. 
Um, and the general expectations is that profits are going to come through higher than they were last year, which is justification for a higher share price. Um, a lot of the banks are forecasting that the dollars, so the dollar has weakened against all major currencies basically up until September this year. And because of dollar weakness, all these multinationals who have operations all over the world, as soon as they bring their money back into the U.S., those profits are a lot higher just because the dollar is weaker. Um, so you should, you, you'll probably see that coming through in the full year numbers that are reported over the next month or so, and that will probably drive a Santa Claus rally going into the end of the year. Well, that's the hope at least. Indeed. Uh, a Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, there are lots of factors why the dollar should continue to firm going forward. We have the Fed. The expectation is that they'll raise rates. That should be dollar positive. Um, and of course, uh, assuming that it's just a blip and Mr. Trump's tax plans do go through, that presumably will be dollar positive as well, uh, which would then be negative for these companies going forward, wouldn't it? Because a strong dollar is negative for the repatriation of decent profits. Yeah, so look, currencies are uh, ebbs and flows. I mean, you you re rewind to last year this time, all the companies were complaining about a strong dollar and I'm fairly sure they're all going to be saying it's been great. So ebbs and flows and that's why you need to be an investor for the long run in, in the equities is because there's these fluctuations, there's these cycles and you want to be in long enough that you outride those these fluctuations but the underlying fundamentals of the company keep getting stronger and growing. So I think from Donald Trump's tax plan, I'm sure there will be a tax, tax change passed. What it looks like is still the big question. Um, but there seems to be a lot more uh, political will to get this done from both camps as opposed to the medical bill that, that failed earlier this year. And over in Europe, there's an expectation that the ECB is going to get more hawkish uh, with the possibility of rolling back that stimulus. Um, and people are excited about the fact that the uh, Catalan president has decided to suspend its call for independence. Um, but isn't that uh, excitement going to be short lived because it's really kicking the can down the road? These guys really do want to have independence. Yeah, so obviously uh, uh, political uncertainty in Europe impacts uh, financial uh, indicators in the sense, in this case, it's the euro which then impacts inflation and impacts uh, interest rates, which Mario Draghi needs to take into consideration. So potentially the political un instability will lead to him uh, delaying his plans for unwinding the ECB balance sheet. But I think on the Catalan uh, thing, uh, Madrid's actually come out now, I think it was about an hour ago, saying based on your wording last night it looks like you guys did declare independence and you were independent for about 10 seconds and then suspended it please clarify what you meant and if you did declare independence please note we're probably going to suspend your government and take it from there um, i think it's worth pointing out that in the spanish constitution their legal system there's no mechanism for what catalan wants to do um, and because of that I can't see it going through. And also, the 91% uh, people who voted yes in the referendum, first of all, the referendum was illegal. So if you came out to vote, you were always going to be voting yes, because if you were voting no, it didn't matter, so you just stayed at home. And who wanted to take on rubber bullets and uh, tear gas? So the referendum itself, you can't really rely on. And uh, yeah, there's just there's no mechanism, mechanism for it. So I think the Catalan thing drags out a bit and then fades away in the next couple of months. All right, let's uh, watch that space then. Now, the U.S. Fed uh, September minutes are coming out later today, and presumably if the tone is hawkish, um, that will uh, fuel more dollar strength, pretty similar to uh, the question I asked before, uh, which is not good for emerging market currencies like um, the South African rand. And just on the rand, we have seen quite a sell-off on it. Do you think it's been overdone, or do you think some of the headwinds, like uh, the midterm budget coming, and obviously the December um, ANC elective conference, are going to continue keeping on a back foot? Yeah, so a few parts to that question. I think that if you have a look at the rand against the dollar, you've seen a lot of weakness, and that's because of dollar strength. But when you compare it to the likes of the euro and the pound, we've been fairly stable, even though against the dollar we've been weakening. And that just points to the rand staying stable, but the dollar strengthening. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't say it's overdone. I think the dollar it is a reason that it's getting stronger. It's the biggest economy in the world. They're about to raise interest rates. It's their stability there. People want to have their money in U.S. dollars. Um, and that's the reason for the strengths on the back of the interest rates, like we said. Um, I think that the political uncertainty around December definitely weighs on investors in general. And do you want to put your money in South Africa with uncertainty hanging over? I mean, you need to remember we live in a 
a global village and we're not comp we're competing with all the other emerging markets for scarce capital um, and if you've got uncertainty and your risk reward ratio is not right people say look we'll give you a skip this time maybe next time we'll put the money in there but for now we're going to take south america or southeast asia or something like that so mm -hmm. those are people we're competing against and that's why we need stability and we need certainty all right we're going to leave it there thank you very much for your insights Thanks, as always uh, michael um, and just on to the point that he's making about uh, uncertainty in south africa a leading investment guru a guy called mark mobias um, he's the chief uh, he's the chairman executive chairman of a company called uh, uh, templeton investments uh, they manage about 750 billion US dollars. They have 500 million uh, dollars worth of investment here in South Africa. Uh, he says that South Africa has gone down on its emerging markets um, fancy list. Uh, so we're not doing very well in terms of our attractiveness. Well, after a short break, Nzinga has more business news for you.